In the present moment, women's wrestling is thriving like it never did before. WWE's women's division is stacked with phenomenal female superstars like Rhea Ripley, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Asuka, and Bianca Belair. The girls often steal the show and outperform the boys with outstanding matches, but there's a lineage that traces back to the one and only ninth wonder of the world, China. When discussing the history of women's wrestling, you would be crazy not to give China some well-deserved credit. Few professional wrestling stories are as compelling as China's. Her path from obscurity to global stardom as a WWE superstar is a testament to her strength and determination. However, her life outside the ring was filled with struggles, ultimately leading to a tragic end. Today, we will explore China's life and career, celebrate her achievements, and acknowledge her challenges. Her real name was Joan Marie Laura, and she was born on December 27, 1969. Growing up in Rochester, New York, China was athletic and strong from a young age, and these qualities would later become defining aspects of her success in pro wrestling. However, her journey to become a WWE superstar took a lot of work. She had a troubled childhood marked by instability and personal challenges. China was a shy girl before exchanging body slams, modeling for top magazines, and guest starring on hundreds of shows. She spent most of her childhood in a home filled with alcoholism and domestic problems. Her escape was physical exercise and she began doing aerobics and lifting weights at a gym near her home. This is where she found her true niche, fitness. As the only woman in the gym, China always stood out, but developed bonds and friendships with the gym members who encouraged her to keep going. She broke gender barriers everywhere she went and continued her love of fitness throughout college. Throughout her life, China dreamed of being an entertainer. She began that career in the early 90s as a belly dancer and soon moved on to fitness competitions, but her real calling in the entertainment world was professional wrestling. Her pursuit of a career in fitness modeling and bodybuilding earned her recognition in the industry due to her remarkable physique and later opened the door to professional wrestling. She began training under the guidance of Killer Kowalski in a wrestling school where she was the only woman. Her time in professional wrestling was short for someone with a legacy like China's. This is especially true when you factor in that the majority of that time was spent in prominent positions in the largest organization in the world. Her career started in 1995. In less than a year, as she recalled in her autobiography, both WWE and WCW were interested in her. Initially, Vince McMahon didn't want her to join the company because he didn't believe the audience would find a woman beating up men believable. While waiting for WWE's decision, she was approached by WCW, who wanted her to be the sole female member of the NWO. She initially accepted the offer, but later turned it down when Shane McMahon informed her that she was about to be hired by the WWE. Vince McMahon later changed his mind by hiring her and she made her WWE debut in 1997, choking Marlena while Goldust was in the ring having a match with Triple H. Her original role was as the enforcer bodyguard for Triple H and later D-Generation X, of course. She often helped Triple H cheat to win by physically interfering in matches and, well, hitting guys right in the nuts. Her transformation into China created a persona that defied the conventional norms of femininity and and strength in wrestling. She became an icon, symbolizing power and challenging the gender stereotypes prevalent in the industry. She went on to break all gender stereotypes by competing with some of the toughest men in the WWE. She wasn't presented as a typical female valet or manager, but as an equal competitor to male wrestlers. Her physicality and athleticism allowed her to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone on the roster at that time, regardless of gender. This was unheard of at the time and catapulted China to stardom. China's success wasn't just about wrestling. She inspired women worldwide, proving that strength knows no gender. In 1999, China made WWE history on three different occasions. She became the first woman to enter the Royal Rumble match, the first woman to qualify for the King of the Ring tournament, and the first woman to become an intercontinental champion. The first lady of sports entertainment broke barriers in a male-dominated sport, setting new standards for female wrestlers. Forget wrestling for a second. These achievements were victories for gender equality in sports and entertainment. She became a babyface again during her long feud with Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett's gimmick was that women belonged in the kitchen. So obviously, China whooped his back and front sides. At Unforgiven, they had a match for the intercontinental title 
title, which she lost. Still, she later defeated Double J for the title at no mercy in a good housekeeping match, becoming the only woman to win the Intercontinental Championship, a title she won thrice throughout her career. China's Intercontinental title win, a title only contested by men until that point, was one of the biggest milestones in WWE history. Here's what she said about her historic win. It was the most amazing experience that I will ever have. When I rewatch that moment, I miss it and cry because of how amazing it was. However, the male wrestlers initially hesitated to let a female overpower them on screen. China claimed that Jeff Jarrett demanded and received $300,000 from Vince McMahon to lose the title cleanly to a woman. This allegedly happened because his contract had expired and he was therefore not contractually obligated to appear on the pay-per-view. If he had not appeared, the WWE would have been criticized for false advertising and the title's lineage would have been broken. China then feuded with Chris Jericho over the belt, defeating him at the Survivor Series but losing the title to him at Armageddon. The two faced off again in a match on SmackDown which ended controversially with both wrestlers pinning each other. As a result, Stephanie McMahon declared them co-champions. At the Royal Rumble, Chris Jericho and China defended the title against Hardcore Holly in a triple threat match, which Jericho won. Afterward, China briefly teamed up with Jericho before turning heel and attacking him, causing him to lose the European title to Eddie Guerrero. After her heel turn, China claimed she sided with Eddie because she couldn't resist his Latino heat. Eddie Guerrero and China, originally heels, later became fan favorites during the summer of 2000, with Eddie dubbing her his Mamacita. The two faced Valvenis and Trish Stratus in an intergender tag team match at SummerSlam with the Intercontinental title on the line, which China won. They later split after Eddie Guerrero was caught on camera showering with two other women. Hey, the man's motto was lie, cheat, and steal. Here's what China said about working with Eddie. Eddie was a great guy. He was always cracking jokes, and I always went out to the ring with a smile when working with him. That smile was not an act. He was a good friend who always made me smile. When I heard he died, my heart was broken. Around this time, China also posed nude for Playboy magazine's November 2000 issue. Here's what she said on the topic. I was labeled as a monster when I wrestled. This was the complete opposite. They made me feel feminine and beautiful, and they complimented me. It wasn't anything pornographic or sexual to me. I was simply showing my femininity. It was very important to me at that point. Playboy allowed me to show the world that I was a woman, a very feminine and beautiful woman. But China's journey had its pitfalls. As her star rose, she struggled with the pressures of fame. The blurring lines between her public persona and her private self led to internal conflicts. According to reports from people who worked with her then, such as Jim Ross, China was vulnerable and insecure despite her tough exterior. On screen, China began a feud with Ivory over the WWE women's title, beating her for the title at WrestleMania 17 in a squash match. China then defended her women's title against Lita at Judgment Day in 2001, which was her final match in the company. Why? Well, the relationship between Triple H, her former real-life boyfriend, and Stephanie McMahon, with whom China claims he had an affair and then left her for, was a major factor in her departure. She left WWE on November 30, 2001, several months after she had been taken off TV, vacating the WWE women's title. On why she left WDWE, China said, I was up for contract renewals when I found out that Triple H had cheated on me and confronted him about it. After that, I was put in the women's division and had to take a pay cut. I tried to remain professional about the whole thing, but the WWE wanted to make it personal. Many people thought I got a big head and asked for a billion dollars, but that wasn't true. The contract they presented didn't let me do other things, and I would have gone backward in my career. Jim Ross later claimed she was not fired, but instead chose to leave for personal reasons. Five years after her WWE debut, China parted ways with the company. The world watched as China's private life unfolded in the media. The scrutiny and the betrayal she felt took a toll on her mental and emotional well-being. From this point on, many of China's darkest moments occurred, unfortunately. Following her departure from WWE, China faced financial difficulties 
difficulties and sought to reinvent herself. This led to her controversial transition into adult entertainment. While this decision provided the financial stability she needed, it exposed her to public scrutiny and criticism. Her personal life became increasingly tumultuous, marked by erratic behavior and public confrontations. As China's struggles intensified, her relationship with WWE deteriorated. Despite her desire to reconcile with the company and return, WWE was hesitant due to the controversy surrounding her. This isolation from the industry she once thrived in added to her struggles, and she felt alienated and disconnected from her passion. After leaving WWE, she ventured into reality shows and magazine appearances and pursued acting gigs. However, the shadow of her pro wrestling persona was too big, and it was hard for her to find her identity outside of the China character. Her struggles with substance abuse became more and more public, further complicating her life. The strength that defined China in the ring ironically became her greatest challenge in life. China's in ring career after WWE was limited. In 2002, she joined joined New Japan Pro Wrestling and first appeared as a special guest referee at the New Japan 30th Anniversary Show. She later wrestled four matches for the promotion. Meanwhile, back in the US, China appeared in several films, hosted various shows, and showed that women can combine strength and beauty in two top-selling Playboy magazine issues. Unlike most former professional wrestlers, China had found success on her own two feet. But China's relationship with Triple H wasn't the only toxic relationship she had with another professional wrestler, or a fellow DX member for that matter. After her release from the WWE, X-Pac also had a romantic, tumultuous relationship with China that began in 2003. They were engaged, broke up, and then became engaged again, in a pattern that continued for the next two years. In 2004, they shocked the world and made an adult tape. While the perception of adult stars is slowly changing within society now, that couldn't be further from reality at that time, since we're talking about something that happened two decades ago. Eager for a repeat success, the company that released Paris Hilton's adult tape got hold of the footage, edited it, and released it. The tape sold over 100,000 copies, with China and X-Pac supposedly earning a share of the profits. However, China maintained that she didn't earn any money from the tape's release. In 2005, China was arrested for domestic assault after allegedly beating X-Pac. During this time, X-Pac claimed that she was battling addiction to drugs, alcohol, and mental illness. Days after the domestic dispute between X-Pac and China, it was reported in the New York Post that she had stripped naked and jumped into a fish tank in a New York nightclub. That same month, she made another appearance on The Howard Stern Show, where she was slurring her words and going off on random tangents. On the program, she claimed not to want to do drugs anymore, but said that if a line of cocaine were in front of her, she would do it. After her appearance, she entered a facility specializing in helping people with depression, and she decided to stop drinking. On February 8, 2007, the date of Anna Nicole Smith's death, a visibly upset China appeared on Larry King to speak about her late friend. On the program, China claimed that she knew it was coming because of how the media ridiculed Anna Nicole Smith, and she drew parallels between Anna and herself. China also had problems with substance abuse. She claimed that her light was spinning out of control around the time she made the tape. After leaving the WWE, she could not use the name China because of its trademark. Therefore, she began to use the name China Doll for public appearances. In November 2007, however, she filed papers to change her name to China legally. In early 2008, China appeared on Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew, but she claimed on the show that she didn't consider herself an addict. During her appearance on the show, China claimed to have a bad relationship with all her family members, including her siblings. On December 27, 2008, she was rushed to the hospital after her birthday party, where she was found passed out with cuts on her arms. In 2010, China was hospitalized after overdosing on sleeping medication, and the same year, TMZ reported that China was accused of battery by a female friend in California. Despite all of these controversies she was involved in after retiring from wrestling, when she decided to return to the ring, 
a decade later for TNA, it certainly got the wrestling world talking. In May 2011, she returned to wrestling, but not to the WWE. Instead, she made her TNA debut and followed it up with one last match at the Sacrifice pay-per-view, where she and Kurt Angle took on Jeff Jarrett, whom she had a history with, and his wife, Karen Jarrett. Her TNA debut gave the company one of their highest ratings in years. Although it was only one last match, China showed the world she had turned her life around. She had overcome depression and emotional trauma and was finally where she wanted to be in life. It was great to see China step between the ropes one last time. She scored the win for her team by making Karen Jarrett submit, putting a punctuation mark on her legendary in-ring career. According to reports, China had not signed a contract with TNA, but instead agreed to work the taping and the PPV on a handshake deal. Man, that's a lot of trust. After that, she released her first adult video with Vivid Entertainment, which sold over a million copies. She said the movie allowed her to regain control of her life, gave her newfound confidence, and got her back on her feet. She went on a huge media tour all over the US. You might be wondering, what about her family? Well, China had a strained relationship with her family. She didn't see her mother for decades until the last few years of her life, and she claimed that her father never got over her decision not to join the FBI. She also alleged that her father took out several student loans in her name and without her knowledge, leaving her with $40,000 in debt. Her father passed away in 2014, and as of 2015, China had re-established a good relationship with her mother and taught English in Japan. Her demons kept haunting her though, and in November 2015, TMZ claimed that China was booked for public intoxication after cops found her outside her apartment building. Around this time, on on Steve Austin's podcast, Triple H mentioned that China deserved to be in the WWE Hall of Fame, but that problems with children googling her prohibited it, obviously referring to China's career as an adult star. This podcast was in 2015, however, and China was rightfully inducted into the Hall of Fame four years later in 2019, although not a solo induction, but as a member of DX. In her final years, China tried to turn her life around. She appeared on reality shows and documentaries discussing her battles with addiction and desire for redemption. However, tragically, on April 20th, 2016, we were all shocked to learn of China's tragic passing. At 46 years old, she was found dead in her apartment in California. Her manager, Anthony Anzaldo, was the one who found her. According to him, China died on April 17th, and he found her three days later after not being able to reach her. Her autopsy revealed traces of painkillers, anxiolytic, muscle relaxers, and alcohol in her system. She had been taking medication for anxiety and sleep deprivation. An official statement was posted to her Twitter account saying, it is with deep sadness that we inform you today that we have lost a true icon, a real life superhero. She will live forever in the memories of her millions of fans and all of us who loved her. The outpouring of grief from fans, fellow wrestlers, and the public spoke volumes about the impact she had on the wrestling industry and the lives of everyone who watched her. When she passed in 2016, Gail Kim, Dana Brooke, and Athena took to social media to tell the world that she inspired them and their career. Eric Eric Angra, the documentarian working on the reconstruction of China, became concerned for her well-being in the fall of 2015. He reached out to Xpac to seek help for China. Xpac spoke with Triple H, and in October of that year, WWE agreed to pay for her rehab, but Anzaldo turned it down on her behalf because she was very paranoid about the WWE. Those close to China were also criticized following her death, as her manager Anzaldo allegedly delayed helping her because he was negotiating negotiating a deal for her to appear on the reality show. Intervention. China's place in WWE history is still a hotly debated topic. As of March 2024, China has yet to be added to the Hall of Fame as a solo performer and is rarely mentioned on WWE programming despite her numerous accolades and historic feats. X-Pac talked about China being inducted into the Hall of Fame as a part of DX in 2019. We had a very tumultuous and unhealthy relationship, but we loved each other, and it brought back all the good memories. It would be so nice if she were still around for this. Fans continue to push for China to be added as an individual to recognize her contributions to WWE. To this day, she is the only woman ever to hold the intercontinental title and the only undefeated women's champion in WWE history. Women's wrestling continues to grow, and even though many women are responsible for it,
for it. China was undoubtedly a pioneer. Not only did she inspire the women, but she was a big part of the success of many men she worked with. She was a crucial part of Dia and helped elevate each group member. Her storyline with Eddie Guerrero also helped him become a bigger star in the WWE. She was a role model to millions of women worldwide by proving anything is possible through hard work and determination. She also showed women they didn't have to look like what society told them to look like. Her legacy goes beyond wrestling, having sparked important conversations about gender equality in sports and entertainment. Her memory should be honored by recognizing her struggles and celebrating her accomplishments. Above all else, China showed the world that being different isn't a bad thing. In fact, it can be your strongest asset. What are your thoughts on China's tumultuous life story and career trajectory? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Ring Rival so you don't miss the next ones.